Hello and welcome! My name is Chris, and today we're going to be talking about Stable LM. This is Stability's newest uh, large language model, and it is pretty awesome. So this follows the trend that we're seeing, especially recently, where we have a lot of these open source or, you know, more permissive licensed large language models coming around, which is absolutely fantastic because, you know, getting these tools accessible by everybody is going to be a game changer. So first things first, let's just see how it goes. And then we'll talk about what they did and how they did it. Uh, we'll start off with my favorite thing to ask these things, which is, can you write me a Python function that calculates the nth Fibonacci number? It's an absolute classic. Okay, and we get the response, which is the classic recursive solution. So it can in fact handle that very complex and amazing request. It kind of goes a little bit off the rails here for i in range four to the square root of five as an integer, which is a little, not quite sure why this is happening, but uh, hey, why not? And we get the outputs we, we kind of expect, though, as always, LLMs are bad at counting. So let's try something else and see what we can come up with. Another classic question, of course, is what is an alpaca? And in that case, we get uh, an answer more in line with what we might have originally expected. All right, so this is obviously dope. And as we can see, it's running in hugging space on an A10G. But how did they get there, right? So let's hop into the blog. Okay, so basically the blog outlines a few important things. I want to focus on just a couple though. Number one, they are using a new data set. So instead of the pile, which traditionally has been used a lot, especially recently when it comes to training these LLMs, uh, it looks like they have a experimental data set built on top of the pile, which has a tremendous number of tokens, which is pretty exciting. It also looks like it has very specific task data so that the model can perform a little bit better on some tasks than a model trained with the pile. And they are going to open source it, though they don't give a particular date at this moment. They are also releasing a set of models that are instruct tuned, though they are merging Alpaca along with some others, which means that this is not going to be able to be used for commercial use. If you wanted to do that, you would need to fine tune the base model itself without including data sets that have restrictive licensing. Both the models and the data from what I can tell are available through the Creative Commons 4 licensing, which is a fairly permissive license, but does require that you give credit. Definitely look into the specifics of the license, but uh, you can use this for commercial purposes as long as you meet the rest of the criteria in the license. So that's about all we have to discuss from the blog. It's a great read. Definitely look into it yourself. In the repository, we have access to a few things. Number one, we have access to some checkpoints. This is fantastic because we are able to actually use these ourselves. And we have access to this demo, which you saw at the beginning of the video. It is important to note that they do have the tuned version as well as the base version. And remember that the tuned version is the version that is a non-commercial license. They also have a quick start and this quick start kind of lets you start getting going with this. So I'm going to show you guys the example in the collab, though to reproduce this on your local machine, it won't be too difficult. So let's hop on into the collab and see if we can get this thing running. So of course, first things first, we have a few cells to run. We have to make sure that we have a GPU and then we install the required libraries. Now we're looking at the setup code. So this has a few things. We're just importing some necessary libraries and then creating a uh, beautiful print option so that we can have our text look as good as possible. We'll run that now. Once we've run that, we can go ahead and select the model that we want. I'll show the code here so we can see what's happening. But basically we are getting the uh, model from Stability AI. This is on Hugging Face. Uh, we get to select the uh, parameter we want. So as you can see, we have float 16, B float 16, and float. Uh, we can also choose to load this in 8-bit or in full uh, precision. 
I'm gonna choose to load this in 8-bit. And as you'll see, which is pretty often the case with the accelerate powered models, we have this device map auto. This is to make sure that any spillover we have from the base model being loaded into our GPU can be loaded into RAM. And other than that, all we have to do is load the actual model. We're gonna use this auto model for causal LM from Hugging Face Transformers and pull our pre-trained model just like this. So I'll go ahead and run that now and I'll be back when it's done. Okay, so now that our model is loaded, you can see that we're only using about 10 uh, gigs of GPU RAM and uh, we're using about four and a half gigs of regular RAM. So let's run a inference. They already have this one set up, so I don't see why not. Uh, they do allow you to fiddle around with the various parameters to change how this will respond or the way it will generate. So let's go ahead and just use it. We'll generate text. Okay, and we get the classic repeat utterance uh, that comes with a lot of these things out of the box. But I wanna draw your attention to over here where we're still rocking less than 11 gigabytes of GPU RAM and five gigs of actual RAM. So this is running very lightweight. Let's try to give it something a little bit different. So we'll give it a shot, trying out the old Fibonacci sequence. So we get a solution. Let's try to implement this solution and see if it works. So we'll just try it for Fibonacci, you know, 10, which usually is 55. Let's see what this is. Uh, and as you can see, it it is nothing. And that's because it's not one or two. And so it actually just returns. So one of the reasons that it was incorrect when we tried it the first time is that we had our temperature set up very high. When we reduce the temperature to 0 0.05, you can see that we get the correct output. So this is the output we would expect to see. And indeed this works for all of our Fibonacci numbers. So um, with that, I'll leave it in your guys' hands. I hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.